Finally, the moment that we've all been waiting for, especially me, it's time to reveal the course that I've been working on. What I've been working on, the major course, the major reveal is... The major course, the major reveal is implementing SD access with DNA Center. That's right, we are making this happen. You see, there was one theme that was really in common, thing, something that really stood out to me when I announced that I'm going for the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure. Here it is, right here. When I announced this, I identified this as the number one point that gives me the most stress. And I did a couple live streams talking about the CCIE exam topics and the blueprint itself. And you all echoed my sentiment that this was really stressful because there's really not a lot of resources out there on how to implement these items right here. Well, let me go ahead and reassure you right now that we have all of this covered. See, you want me to prove it, don't you? Let me just go ahead and get signed in real quick. I'll jump over to the provision workflow, into the fabric itself, into the actual fabric design, and look at that, blue boxes there mean that the fabric is up and running. And I will take you, not on a journey, just pointing and clicking and making stuff happen from the front end GUI, we are going to start from square one, day zero. The DNA Center appliance is sitting in a brown box on the floor. What do we do next? That's what this course is all about. And I'm joined by Jeff Kish and Keith Barker on this journey too, because they bring tremendous insight into the theory and the actual design implications and the actual other tools that are needed in order to actually create an SD access fabric. Consider this for a moment. During the CCIE exam study guide, the webinar that Cisco held, they did say that you really don't need to know Cisco ICE in order to prepare for the CCIE lab environment. They said they've got that all set up for you and you just need to know how to deploy the fabric. The thing with that is, is if you actually sit down to deploy an SD access fabric in the real world, you do need to know ICE. You'll need to know fully how DNA Center interacts with ICE or your IPAM devices like Infoblox. You'll also need to know how to configure things like VRF route leaking on your Fusion routers. There are a lot of other stuff that goes into making an SD access fabric work that we are going to cover. So that not only are you prepared for all of the items that are on the CCIE exam blueprint, but you're prepared for implementing an SD access fabric in the real world with best practices and designs and all of the subtle little nuances and gotchas are covered. This course is going to be a one-stop shop for implementing a real world SD access fabric from day zero all the way through maintaining and automating your entire environment too. What I wanna say really about this course is that a tremendous amount of effort, research, passion, troubleshooting from the entire team has gone into making this course a reality and it's coming down the home stretch now. So what I'm gonna do now is actually roll one of the nuggets from this course on LAN automation. This is just one nugget. So what you should do is extrapolate this times a couple hundred nuggets. And that's what the course, that's the value that this course is really gonna bring to the table for you. So feel free to enjoy this nugget. Stick around, I got a message for you at the end. So we made it to the big show. Now it's time to actually kick off our first major DNA Center automation task. We've now gone through the discovery process, bringing in our border node, which is also going to serve as our seed node. And from there, it's going to be able to reach out to the directly connected devices and begin automating the actual creation and configuration of our entire underlay network. So let's jump into whiteboard real quick and summarize what it is that we're really going to be doing in this particular nugget. We're focusing in on the underlay portion itself right now. And as you already know, we've got NOLA border one somewhat configured, network connectivity is in place, and it is in the inventory of DNA Center. It can be managed by DNA Center. What we need to do now is bring these other devices online and configure the actual network connections in place. And that's what LAN automation does for us. It's a big talking point to point out that NOLA edge one, NOLA Edge 2 and NOLA Border 2 are in their factory defaulted states right now. Here is the console of NOLA Edge 1, here is the console of NOLA Edge 2, and here is the console of NOLA Border 2. You'll see that we're on the initial config dialog, and that is the state that these devices 
have to be in in order for NOLA border 1 to connect to them and automate. You see, DNA Center is going to SSH into NOLA border 1 here, and it's going to be using plug-and-play technology, little agents that are running on each of these devices in order to connect to them and begin building an initial configuration. What's really cool is under the hood, it's actually going to cr turn NOLA border 1 into a temporary DHCP server, and then each of these edge devices or the connected border node over here will get an IP address from that DHCP server. DNA Center is then going to log in to each one of these devices via SSH and then begin building the actual configuration itself that's going to be used for the underlay. Now the LAN automation process itself is a little tricky in the sense that it will configure all of these devices up till a point. It'll configure things like certificate exchanges between DNA Center and the devices. It'll configure things like AAA settings, but it won't configure the point-to-point -point IP addresses that are going to be used for each one of these links until the very end. Basically, LAN automation is broken down into two steps. I'm going to write one and two right here. The first step is going to be full-blown prep work, where DNA Center is actually SSHing in and then getting the base configuration in place. And then the second step is it will assign the IP addresses on the links as its final act. In order to kick off this final act, you actually do have to click Stop Automation. I know that seems a little counterintuitive that you're telling it to stop automation instead of finish automation, but that's what the button is, is it's Stop Automation. And it will tell you when it's ready to be able to click Stop. So when you click the Stop Automation, what it does is it assigns an IP address on the edge nodes, the distant nodes first, because when it changes this from an access port to a switch port, this connection will break. Then it will come back to the border node here, our seed node, and configure that as a routed interface on the same subnet, and then the link will come back to life. Again, when we went through the nuggets on prepping our network connectivity for LAN automation, we had to make sure that DNA Center would be able to reach 192.168.168. And we've already done that, and that feels good. But it also is worth repeating, you do have to make sure IP routing is turned on on your seed node because it will be routing packets from external networks down to each of these on these slash 31 point-to-point -point link. We're going to cover this in a lot more detail when we start talking about what happens under the hood when it comes to troubleshooting LAN automation. But for now, we've set up the scenario it's time to actually kick off the LAN automation process within DNA Center. So without further ado, let's clear the screen and get started. I'm going to go ahead and sign into DNA Center real quick. I'll sign in with my credentials. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into the provision workflow. Now here it is. There's the NOLA Border 1 device that we've already discovered and brought into our inventory. And what we're looking to do now is kick off LAN automation. So I'm going to drill down into my site real quick. We're looking at the New Orleans site. And since all of these devices are spread across multiple buildings. We've got NOLA Border 1 and NOLA Edge 1 are going to be in NOLA Main, and NOLA Border 2 and NOLA Edge 2 are going to be in NOLA Satellite. I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the New Orleans tier so it brings in everything underneath. It. Under Actions here, I'm going to go into Provision and then LAN Automation. We give that a click, and it slides out the LAN Automation dialog. So our primary site is going to be the only site where we have a device currently. That's going to be our NOLA main, and our primary device is going to be our NOLA border one. Now this part is pretty important. Right here, we have to select the ports that NOLA Border 1 is going to use to discover the directly connected devices. It's not sending out a broadcast out every single port. We specifically say, hey, look at this port and see if someone is connected to you from there. That you can automate. So if I bring up the console of NOLA Border 1 real quick, I'll go into Enable Mode, and then I'll give it a Show CDP Neighbors, and we can see there's my three factory defaulted switches. My interfaces are GIG 102, 103 and 105. So that's where I want to do my discovery. I'm going to choose to modify selections. And if I scroll down, I do have to click show more because it only shows 10 results at a time. Let's just go ahead and just bring them all up. How about that? So I'll scroll down and we said we were looking at gig 102. Scroll down some more. 103 and 105. Now I'll click done. And if I scroll up, I see there's the three interfaces that have been selected there. Now, by default, it asks us which site do we want to place these devices in. We can change this after the fact. So for now, I'm just going to put them in NOLA main. 
And next, we have to choose the IP address pool that it's going to be using to assign these interfaces addresses. So we created the NOLA underlay pool when we went through the design workflow. I'll give that a selection. And if it were overlapping another pool, we would specify this here. Now this is the ISIS domain password. If there already was an ISIS domain in existence, we would specify it here. But since there isn't, this will actually be creating the domain password and it can be anything. Now enable multicast does turn on multicast routing on all of these devices, and it will set the seed node to be the rendezvous point if we want it turned on. Now this part's pretty cool. When it finds these devices, we have the option to give it a name, otherwise DNA Center is going to set the name and you probably don't want that. With device prefix, you could put something here like NOLA, and then every device that it discovers would be NOLA1, NOLA2, NOLA3, and so on. But since we had a specific naming convention that we wanted for our devices, we can actually use a CSV that attaches a name to a device's serial number. So here I'll drag my CSV up onto the screen. These are the serial numbers of these devices and the host name that they're going to be set. So simply creating a CSV file that follows this format of host name, comma, then the serial number, next line, host name, comma, serial number, that will be sufficient. So when it discovers devices with these serial numbers, it'll know that that's the host name we want to use. So I'll close that and I'll choose to browse to that file and I'll choose my host name CSV. Look, it's successfully imported because we followed the correct format. So that's it. With all of these items in place, We'll click start and this will kick off the LAN automation process. Then I'll show you what it looks like when it's in progress and what to look out for so that you know when it's completed and we know when to actually click stop. Now I will say, depending on your environment, this could take a really long time. It could take as short as 10 minutes for one quick device or it could take as long as hours depending on how many devices you have. Further, if you have marked an image as golden in design, and it discovers devices that don't meet that golden image for the site that it's searching for, it will attempt to upgrade them during this process. So also a lot time for that upgrade process to take place if you've marked images as golden. So without further ado, I'm going to click start and there it goes. Network orchestration is starting and LAN automation is officially underway. Now I will say this too, you can watch the LAN automation process from the console of these devices, but absolutely positively do not press any buttons. Don't press enter or anything like that because that will break the plug and play agent and the LAN automation process. Further, you can go back to the action section here, then provision, and then LAN automation status, and you can see what's been underway. Again, this will take a little bit of time to get going, but you can always check the logs and refresh and come back to this as it's going on. So I'll let this sit for a while and then we'll come back to it as progress happens. So after two or three minutes, I can now see my status has changed to in progress and the discovered devices are three. That means they're, well, in progress. It's now going through the part of actually using the plug and play agent and setting some base configs before it can actually move on to the final phases of setting the IP address. Beyond that, the logs show up here that it's claimed some devices and the devices are listed here. Look, with the correct host names mapped to the serial numbers, it's currently got a status of claiming. So we're gonna let it sit some more. It is gonna take a little while. We'll come back to it when it's finally showing complete. So I had to go full screen here to make this little view work, but you can see now it does still show as in progress because I haven't clicked the stop button at the bottom, but we do have three completed and discovered devices. So if I go to logs, I can see what happened here. We've got the three devices that have been added to inventory and the devices themselves also show as completed. So let me click off of the LAN automation process here and we'll refresh inventory. Let me get the, the view back to normal here. Let's refresh inventory. Ah, there they are. There's my three devices. They're all supported. They're all reachable. We've got the devices themselves showing up with serial numbers and roles. And this is where I want to start changing things up just a hair. My NOLA border two is actually going to be in the distribution tier. In fact, one thing you can do is you can jump all the way back to the home page real quick, scroll down and check out your topology. We'll zoom in to the New Orleans region here. And what I want to do is I want to change NOLA border two by right clicking on it and just setting this to be a distribution tier. You could also do the exact same thing from the inventory pane, but you can see since I made that change there, it's already in place. 
So now, since my devices all show completed LAN automation status, and very important, the last sync status here shows managed, we are good to go clicking the stop button. And that's what the next nugget is all about. In the next nugget, we're gonna click the stop button, watch it finish its process, and then circle back to the actual configs that it actually made on our devices. In the meantime, that's been kicking off LAN automation. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. So there you have it. That was one nugget on kicking off the LAN automation process. LAN automation is a huge topic and we cover LAN automation a lot more throughout this particular course. And I think you're going to really enjoy the value, the actual real world experiences that come with this course that we've recorded. So keep your eyes peeled for the actual release of this course. I'm going to be shouting it from on top of a mountain because it's so insanely cool and fun and exciting. So that's been the big reveal, SD Access with DNA Center. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.